In this video, I'm going to show you how to work out ionic formulas. So I'm going to show you two different methods. If you can't get on with method one, stick around until I show you method two. And the first one is what I call the crossover method. So what we're trying to find out, for example, is what is the formula of aluminium oxide? We know off the periodic table that aluminium is Al and oxygen is O. So is the formula of aluminium oxide just AlO or is it AlO2? or is it Al2O? Well, in actual fact, it's none of these, and I'll show you how to work it out. So first of all, you need to know the ions for aluminium and oxide. The aluminium ion is a three plus ion, and the oxide ion is a two minus ion. If you don't know how to work out the charge on ions, I'll put a link up to a previous video here now. So what we do then is we cross over these numbers, so the three next to aluminium comes down next to oxygen and the two next to oxygen comes down next to aluminium and we get Al2O3. Let's look at another example. What is the formula of magnesium chloride? So a magnesium ion is a two plus, chloride ion is a one minus. Notice how we don't show ones when we're doing formulas. Again, we cross the numbers over. So the two next to magnesium comes down next to chlorine and the one next to chlorine comes down next to magnesium but we don't show the ones. So that becomes MgCl2. Let's take a look at another one. The formula of zinc sulfide. So zinc forms a 2 plus ion and sulfur forms the S2 minus the sulfide ion. So this one's a little bit different. We cross the numbers over so that 2 goes down next to zinc this two goes down next to sulfur and we would get Zn2S2, but really it's just a ratio that we're interested in. So we can cancel these down. So if it's the same number, they cancel out and a two to two ratio is the same as a one to one ratio. So that just becomes ZnS. And we'll do one more. So what is the formula of sodium oxide? Sodium forms an Na plus ion and oxide is an O2 minus ion. Once again, we cross over the numbers. So the two goes down next to sodium, oxygen has a one next to it, so nothing next to it, and that becomes Na2O. Now, if you found that method a bit confusing, then we'll try a different method, and this is what I call drawing the ions. So let's try working out the formula of beryllium chloride. Beryllium forms a two plus ion, so each beryllium ion is a two plus, and chloride is a one minus. And with this method, what we try and do is get the right number of particles so the charges balance out. We need the same number of positives as negatives. So we've got two positive coming from the beryllium ion, so we need two negatives. That means we're going to need another chloride ion. So now we've got two negatives all together, we've got two positives all together, so they cancel out and it becomes BeCl2. We can see we've got one beryllium particle or ion and we've got two ions of chloride. Let's try another one. What is the formula of magnesium oxide? Each magnesium ion is a two plus, each oxide ion is a two minus, so we've already got two plus and two minus. So simply one of each cancels out the charge. So that would be just MgO. What would be the formula of calcium bromide? Well, a calcium ion is two plus, bromide ion is one minus. So to get two positives, we need to have two bromide ions. Now we've got two negatives. So the formula of calcium bromide would be CaBr2. So here's some formulas that you just have to remember that will become useful when we write in ionic equations and symbol equations, but you're not really going to be able to work these out. And these are the formulas for common acids. So hydrochloric acid is HCl, sulfuric acid is H2SO4, and nitric acid is HNO3. So come back to these in an hour and test yourself. Can you still remember these? Check again tomorrow can you still write down the formulas of these three acids? Now, if you've stuck with me so far, you're doing really well on this video. Now we're going to make it even more challenging by looking at polyatomic ions. 
and these are where we've got more than one atom forming an ion. So with the case of hydroxide, we can see an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom all together makes a one minus. Sulfate is one sulfur, four oxygens, and that whole thing is a two minus. And carbonate is one carbon, three oxygens, that whole thing is a two minus. And finally, nitrate is a NO3 one minus. So what is the formula of calcium hydroxide? I'll show you both methods in case you're using the crossover method or drawing the ions out. So calcium is a two plus. Hydroxide is a one minus ion. So if we use the crossover method, the, two, the one minus goes down next to calcium. The two goes down next to the hydroxide ion. So we've got one Ca and you would want to write the two there, but we need to remember, we need to multiply both the hydrogen and the oxygen. So in this case, we put brackets around the OH to make sure the whole thing is multiplied by two. If we're writing out the ions, each calcium is a two plus, each hydroxide is a one minus. So to get the two plus, we're going to need two of these hydroxide ions. So this is how we would write it. Ca1, but we don't write the ones, remember. And then we need two lots of OH and we put the brackets around it. So we're multiplying the whole thing. Let's look at another one of these. What is the formula of sodium carbonate? So sodium is a one plus ion. Carbonate is CO3 two minus. Cross over the numbers becomes Na2CO3. We don't need to put that in brackets because we've only got one of it, so we're not multiplying it. If we did it by drawing the ions, Na is a one plus. Each carbonate is a CO3 two minus. So to get the charges to balance, we've got two minuses, so we need two pluses. So we're going to need another Na plus. And the same formula that we end up with, Na2CO3. So if you found this video useful, please remember to click subscribe. Thank you for watching.